How about you? I'm Hank. Welcome to Hamiltonville Farm. Got really cool stuff going on today. We're actually going to be setting a fire, right? And uh, so I'm going to show you some process for the control burn. I'm going to show you the John Deere 450 in action. And it's going to be a really, really cool video. Anyway, so what we got going on, the bay is out here. And then we've got a lot of hurricane damage in this area. You can see, see how the trees are bent over here, 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 about out in that distance. Well, see all these trees that are bent over? Well, the, the owner of this property wants to get rid of all this fuel on the ground. And so that's what we're doing today. What you doing? <laughs> Setting fire? Man, hot. Yeah, it's hot out here. talking about is it's a uh, half diesel half gas mixture it gets a little warm Tommy yeah it gets a little warm <laughs> it's hot this morning and humid it's not only is it uh you know 90 degrees outside but you're also standing next to hell uh so tommy's been doing this for 100 years how long have you been setting fire tommy 55 60 years 55 or 60 years he's been setting fires For those of you that don't know, this stuff is really important for land management, conservation of the land. This actually promotes healthy, healthy growth, decreases the chance for wildfires. So these prescribed burns, some people call them prescribed burns, some people call them control burns. But this is very important stuff for the environment. And uh, you know, oh, why would, why would they be you know, destructive like that? Well, it's important so that the environment can regenerate itself and it's good for mother nature. A lot of you may be thinking about how they set the fire, looking at the winds and all that stuff, looking at the headwind. Well, it's a little different scenario today. You, normally what you do is you set the back line, uh, you know, against the wind and then you, you set the fire so that it runs into itself and doesn't go. But this is a little different scenario literally you set it on this side where they set it again on this road and on the other side is the bay so there's not i mean you know it's going to water uh so it's a little different scenario but if they were landlocked then they would have started they would have started it against the back line and then burned it into itself essentially but you know it's always nice to have the bay so that the water i mean the fire ain't going into the water right what we're going to show you now is the 450. What he does is they blade around shooting houses and feeders and things like that to preserve the, because it's a hunting lease. Uh, and so they're preserving the, the shooting houses for the people that lease the property. That break right there will protect that shooting house.
and he'll go ahead and set the fire around it so that it doesn't interfere with it. Well, that smoke gets thick quick. This is such an interesting process to see how it all unfolds and to see how there's a lot of science to it. Pretty interesting. Where you at, Tommy? You look like one of them rock stars coming through at the concert, out of the smoke, or maybe a wrestler or something. How many miles you walk setting fires? I'm 10 miles a day. <laughs> That keep you in shape on it. <laughs> it looked like it would, but <laughs> I hear you. Like it's only been like a couple minutes, and you can see how protected that shooting house is. Like there's not n nothing even touched it. So that's good. Ooh, you hear that? Let me get out of here before it gets too hot. That's good for the people that lease the property. They don't have to worry about their equipment. You can see how the road actually just stops the flames from coming over. So, you know, it doesn't jump per se. Looks like it's going good on that side. Look at this shooting house. I mean, it, nothing touched it. And all the, all the fire has already went around. So I'm sure the guy that owns that shooting house appreciates that kind of stuff that they do for him, you know? Because that's an expensive look. That's an expensive looking shooting house. But this right here, here's another hurricane damaged tree. When they're bent over like that, that's from the hurricane. Hurricane Michael back in 2018. Cat 5. Yep, just burned right up to this point. Look, it'll stop right there where these two roads, where the fork in the road is. Here's the fork in the road. Right here. It'll burn up to that point right there and stop. Won't cross that road. Here's what it looks like just starting off. See this line? And he'll just walk, dropping that fire. And off she'll go. Nature will take care of the rest. So Tommy, tell me some of the weather considerations when you because you just can't burn every day, right? No. So what's some of the weather considerations? Well, the humidity has a lot to do with it in the wind direction. You have to make sure you've got the wind blowing right. Yeah. The humidity don't need to be too low. If it gets below 35%, we don't burn. Oh, okay, 35%. Yeah. And the, today's wind is blowing right toward the water. We don't, we don't like it to blow over really 10 or 12 miles an hour. Yeah. So 10 or 12 miles an hour, 35% humidity. But again, you've got to meet all the state and local requirements before you burn. So, permit, permit yeah, get all your permits and, and of course, you know, the insurance that's associated, but their business has all that. But, uh, you know, so they're doing safe, effective, and legal is the, is the main things. But this being controlled like this now will prevent this thing from catching on fire and then like spreading into neighborhoods because over there is a neighborhood over there is a neighborhood because people like living close to the water and now this will help keep them safe. When that wind picks up, you really still start to move in. They're gonna start from down there and they're just gonna keep dripping, 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 dripping. 
All the way down through here. This road is actually three miles long. I think they said two and a half, three, no more than three miles long, but that's the line they're gonna set. You refilling? Refilling. Do this off. This is a uh, Forester number 42001 fire pot. And like I say, he mixes it with half, half diesel, half gas. Got a little burn oil in it to make it black, not much. Yeah. So what he said was there's a little burnt oil in it as well. Burnt oil and gas work just get it burnt oil decent. That's a little dirtier. Now what do you use for the ignition source? That little knob there? Or is that the knobs the flow? Isn't it? Flicky bit. Oh, <laughs> okay. Because how I like my grill is I squeeze a little trigger on my. <laughs> oh, man. So that's the fire pot we're using. We're actually driving around to the other end, but let's just watch how fast this fire takes off here. Let's see. So this is it beside me. It don't take long, is what I'm saying. I see his helper up there, dripping as he goes.